So we've seen the light, we've controlled the light, we've captured the light, but now we need to process the light. Now I'm not going to go into a specific program here. I'm going to show you the main things you need to process in an image to in any different type of software that's actually going to increase the contrast, the tonal range, is going to actually help you bring the light out that you've already captured. Before we do that, let's just understand the difference between a RAW and a JPEG image. A RAW image is a, an, a file, is an image the, capture has ca uh, the camera has captured, sorry, and it's had no editing done by the camera. It's saying, I'm going to leave this alone and let you decide how to edit it. A JPEG image, however, is an image that the camera has already pre-processed and condensed to a small size and said, I've already done a lot of work. I'm going to give you the package to thing. But the problem is with a JPEG, a lot of the information has been lost. So when it comes to editing, you can't pull and push and, and change and pull around so much because the information isn't there. It's already been taken out of the, the camera's already decided what the editing is. Now, if you're using a camera phone, a JPEG is going to be where it's at. But if you're using a DSLR, try to consider moving to a raw process, a raw um, uh, capture file, because then you can do much more with it in post. So let's think about the main process points. We need to correct the white balance, make sure that's right. We need to adjust the exposure sometimes in our images, because even though we might have it absolute, uh, perceive we have it perfectly in camera, when it actually comes to it, the exposure might be out. The contrast is going to create the difference between the whites and black, so we can adjust that as well. We can play with the color sometimes. We might desaturate, we might boost, we might go black and white. Then sharpening is going to bring out the detail. And then we have filters that are going to add effects on top. These are the main process points in any software package. Most software packages now have sliders. And I'm just going to say this. Go in and play with them. These are the one main ones to play with. When you've caught an image, when you like the image, go in and play. Correct your white balance. Make sure that's right. Go in. Make sure your exposure is right. But now increase your contrast. Soften your contrast. Color. Saturate. Desaturate. Sharpening. Sharpen unsharpen play with these things play with filters have fun but these are the main process points you're going to have in every piece of software and these are the important ones everything else is icing or the cherry on top if you play around with these you'll gain the basic processing skills that you need to create good images okay so let's just have a look at a quick process now the first thing we often want to do is just correct the white balance. So we're going to look for something that is quite close to white. I'm going to select the Lightroom light white balance tool and click that. And that's going to just bring the white balance to a correct sort of place. Obviously, it's depending on the light it was shot under, but that's going to balance it out. So that's where we'd start. And then we're going to look at the exposure. Now, if I take the exposure tab on this and I pull it, I'm going to say that the the face is probably a little bit under for me so I'm just going to open it up a little bit and I'm going to increase the exposure there but I've got to watch the the highlights on the forehead so with Lightroom what I can do is I can click this uh, little triangle up here at the top and that will give me a warning of highlight alerts so then we want to look at the contrast so we've got contrast here, and if we increase that, it's going to create a little pop. So we want a little bit of contrast added on here. And then we're going to look at color, which is saturation and vibrance. So let's just say we think it's a little bit too bright. Let's just take a little bit of saturation down, saturation or vibrance. Vibrance tends to be a little bit more delicate. So... I can just take that up a little bit, even though I took the saturation, which is the general color, down. And then we can look at sharpening and filters. So in Lightroom, we would go down to detail. In fact, we could actually do it here with clarity. So let's just keep it simple and do it with clarity. So this is just going to soften and sharpen. 
Now, one of the important things we need to understand is that when we talk about everything in the frame, either adds or subtracts, which we'll discuss later, by cropping an image, we can cr change the composition. So let's just say we go here, just click done, and we've just changed the composition. In this instance, we've ruined it. But what we can do is by just changing the composition of an image, we can change the frame. So we can sometimes, we might capture an image with something in the frame and we want to take it out a little bit. So we might decide on this image, for instance, that we don't want this over here and we could pull that in a little bit. Or we could even create, change the aspect ratio. So I might go, for instance, on this one, I might decide I want to go 16 by 9. And I just want to create a little bit of a, a slightly different look. And now we've changed the image by how we've cropped it. So the cropping tool can be very useful when we are composing our image. We've captured it in real life but now we're bringing it in. And a little tip for that, when you're capturing an image in real life, allow a little bit of room around the head and around the body and around the edges. Take a little bit more than you need because you can always crop it out afterwards, but you can never add it back in when you've lost it. So like I said, this is a quick guide showing you how white balance, exposure, contrast, color, and sharpening can work and how cropping, and obviously different software have different filter effects as well. So what software should you use? Well, the industry standard is Photoshop and Lightroom, but that can be quite expensive. There are lots of free versions out there. If you're using a smartphone, I recommend you try Snapseed from Nick Software. Now, they've been bought by Google now, but these guys have been in the uh, photography software business for a long time, and Snapseed on your smartphone is free, and it's a fantastic little piece of editing software. In fact, it's so good, they've taken it, and imported it into Google Plus. So when you upload a photo on Google Plus, you're actually using Snapseed software to edit those photos. Really, 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 really good. There are free Photoshop alternatives like GIMP, um, and you can try those as well. I would recommend eventually, though, when you do get to that level, Lightroom is the place to start, and then add Photoshop as you move along.